In section 9.2, we talked for a while about absolute value. Do you remember absolute value? You're like, absolutely. <laughs> Get it, Mr. Leonard? I'm so funny. I go, yeah, he's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to talk about absolute value for a little bit because we're going to combine. Here's where this chapter is going. We did inequalities. We're doing absolute value. Next, we're going to combine absolute value with inequalities, and look what that does. So this is going to be kind of interesting. Absolute value equations. Can you tell me? What does absolute value calculate, or what's it determine? The distance from zero. Say that louder. The please. distance from zero. That's exactly right. Did you guys hear back there? Good. So if absolute value calculates the distance from zero, How much is the absolute value of 9? nine. What that's saying is that 9 is just 9 units away from 0. It's basically how much would you have to count to get there. What's the absolute value of negative 12? Good. It's basically like I'm standing in the middle of this room with a tape measure and saying this. I'll go this way. How, about how far am I from that wall? Ah, it looks like about 10 feet. So if I took my tape measure out, it's going to give me 10 feet, right? But if I turn around and measure to this wall, that's about 12 feet. Is it going to give me negative 12 feet that way? Yeah. Tim, measure is still going to give me 12 feet, right? Even though it's a completely different direction, distance doesn't matter. It's just saying you're a certain distance away from something. That's what absolute value does. It says absolute value of 9 is 9 because positive 9 is 9 units away. Absolute value of negative 12 is 12 because negative 12 is 12 steps away from 0. Are you with me? Even though that was a negative, we're talking about the distance from 0. So basically, if you want to think about it this way, <clears throat> absolute value takes a positive number and keeps it positive, takes a negative number and makes it positive. What about this one? 8 or negative 8, what do you think? Why, is that, why doesn't that change to positive 8? I don't get it. All right, so it's only, that negative is only applied to the absolute value that's inside of that. So this is basically the same. What's the absolute value of 8? And then take the opposite or take the negative. So this happens to be negative 8 for sure. So the difference between here and here, if the negative is outside of the absolute value, it doesn't really get applied to that. Now this is all fine and good. This is stuff you've had before. This is all the way back in like pre-algebra days. What we haven't really talked a whole lot about is what happens if you have an equation. So for instance, what if the absolute value of x equal the number could you tell me how much x is? Five. 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 Yeah, five would work, right? Because if I took the absolute value of five, that would give me five, wouldn't it? Okay. Five. 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 five is good. Well, wait a second. So a couple other people said a couple other things. What'd you say? Negative. Well, wait a second. Why, why negative five? Because absolute value is going to turn positive. Oh. So if I plug in positive five, the absolute value of five is five. True. If I plug in negative 5, what's the absolute value of negative 5? Five? Five. Hey, it works. So with absolute value, we get how many solutions do you think all the time? Yeah. Because here's what it does. Absolute value doesn't care whether something's positive or negative. It's going to make it positive no matter what. So if I'm looking for 5, I could substitute in here both 5 and negative 5, and they would both work in this equation. True. Well, that's kind of interesting. That really doesn't happen that much. How about, um, how about this one? Absolute value of y equals 12. Does that still have two solutions? Yep. What are they? Good, all right. Because if I plug both of those things in there, they are both going to give me positive 12. How about this one? How many solutions does that one have? One. Yeah, there's no negative zero, right? So that's, this is the only time where you actually get just one solution. So if it's equal to zero, then yeah, why is it, that's the only thing that's going to work. Negative zero doesn't really make sense to write. Not 
absolute value of x equals negative 3, what are you going to get out of that one? You can't do it. Well, why can't you do it? You can't get a negative number out of an absolute value. So if I plug in anything here, if I plug in 3, if I plug in 3, what's the absolute value of 3? 3. Okay, if I plug in negative 3, what's the absolute value of negative 3? 3. Can I get negative 3 from an absolute value? All you can negative is outside that. Okay, so, so this, that would be possible, wouldn't it? But negative, sure, because I can plug in 3 or negative 3 and both change it to negative. But if I do that with no negative sign, is that possible? No. That's, that would be a problem. So if you have just an absolute value and it equals a negative, you know that's no solution. No solution there. Do you feel okay with this absolute value stuff so far? Raise your hand if you do. Feel all right with it. Good. Let's see how to make a little bit more complicated equations. Because right now, this is this pretty basic stuff. We're going to go ahead and move on into what happens when we have like true equations in there, true expressions. And we'll stop here uh, at the end of our end of this example. Let's write that down. So the absolute value of 4x plus 2 equals 6. Now we already learned from over here that probably this thing has two solutions to it. With me? Probably two solutions. But how in the world do we figure them out? Well, here's the deal. If we looked back over here, we knew the absolute value equals 5. Here's what we said. If the inside of this equals 5 itself, absolute value is not going to change that. You with me? However, if the inside of this, I'm, notice how I'm saying the inside of this rather than just x. If the inside of this equaled the negative of this number, it wouldn't matter because the absolute value will make it positive, therefore it would equal that number. Are you with me? I'll say it one more time so you really get it. If the inside equals this number, you're good. Absolute value wouldn't change it. If the inside of this equals the negative of this number, you're also good because this would change that negative into the positive. You with me? So let's take that and, and run with it over here. If the inside of this equals 6, you know this is going to be a true statement. You with me? Because the absolute value of 6 is going to give you 6. However, if the inside of this equals negative 6, is it still going to give you a true statement? Yep. No. What's the absolute value of negative 6? Six? Six, six. So let's ask you one more time. If this equals 6, you know you're going to be okay because the absolute value of 6 is 6. If this equals negative 6, what's the absolute value of negative 6? You're still going to be okay. Here's what this says to you. You will get two solutions. You're going to get, in fact, two equations. You can't just solve this thing directly. If I see on your test you go, oh, I just subtract 2 and divide by 4. I know you really don't understand what absolute value means. What absolute value means is that I can take the inside of this and set it equal to that number. Because if I know that if this part equals 6, the inside of it equals 6, the absolute value of 6 is 6. However, I also know that if the inside of my absolute value equals negative 6, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. What's the absolute value of negative 6? What's the absolute value of 6? If I set this equal to negative 6 and this equal to 6, my inside, it doesn't really matter because the absolute value is going to make both of those things equal to positive 6. Now you're heavier with me on this so far. Let's solve this and see that that's actually true. So we'll subtract 2. 4x equals 4. We'll divide by 4. I'm going quickly through the, sol the solving of this because, well, the equations, that's the basic part. Really remembering it is is the two equations here. That's what's important. Subtract 2, we're going to get 4x equals negative 8. We'll divide by 4. x is negative 2. Let's just go ahead and check this to make sure, okay? Are you with me? Watch. Let's plug in 1. Everybody, what's 4 times 1? Plus 2. What's the absolute value of 6? So is that, is that a solution? Let's try negative 2. What's 4 times negative 2? Plus 2. Negative 6. What's the absolute value of negative 6? That's what we said this. If the inside equals negative 6, the absolute value will make it positive no matter what. So we get two solutions out of that thing. 
I'll write the steps on the board next time. We'll start with one of these and we'll move on. So if you remember from yesterday, what we're dealing with are these absolute value equations. And we said this about absolute value. Whatever's on the inside, absolute value will make it positive. So if it is positive, it remains positive. If it's negative, it will become positive. So according to our equations, we, it, it meant this. It said if the inside of this equation is equal to the number itself, the absolute value is not going to change it. It's going to remain that same exact positive number. That would be great. That right there yields the first equation for us. It says if this inside part equals this number, oops, If the inside part equals this number, that's going to give us one solution because if this equals positive 6, absolute value will keep positive 6, positive 6. That will be a solution. However, what we also know about absolute value is that it will make any negative number positive. So the other option we have here is if this inside part happens to be negative 6, that absolute value will take that negative 6, it will make it positive 6, and that will be another solution to this problem. That's what we learned yesterday. I hope we felt okay with that last time. Good, so that gives us our two equations. We set one of them equal to the number itself. We set one of them equal to the negative of that number. Because if the inside part's equal to negative 6, the absolute value of negative 6 gives us 6. The absolute value of 6 gives us 6. That's two solutions for us. So I want you to write down this note. We did, this is what we didn't do last time. We are going to make two equations every time we see absolute value in this class. Make two equations. The first one equal to the number. So one of them equal to the number. In this case, that's our 6. And one of them equal to the negative of that number. Because absolute value will take the negative, force it to become positive, and therefore change that into another solution. So one equal to the number itself, one equal to the negative of that number. Listen, in this section, it's not actually the solving that's hard. I mean, honestly, that's like pre algebra stuff. That's very, very easy. That one's very, very easy. The solving's not hard. It's remembering that, oh, with absolute value equations, I've got to make this equal to two. I have to have two equations out of this, one equal to the number, one equal to the negative. The solving's easy. I mean, everybody can do that in here. That's why you're here. But if you forget to make the two equations, are you going to get this right? You're going to get it maybe half right. I mean, if you just solve this directly, you're, you're going to get this one probably, because this is that's exactly the same thing with the absolute values, but you're going to completely miss the idea of absolute value, which is you also have to have this. You also have to know that the absolute value takes a negative and makes it positive. Therefore, that's giving us another option for a solution. Are you with me on that? So you have to know that we're going to get those two equations out of this. The solving them again, I mean, I think we did this last time, but it's not hard. I mean, the solving 